The second topic of the nanotechnology is carbon-based materials. Can anybody tell me which are the allotropic forms of carbon? So carbon is, of course, the most important element that we know. Eh, at least it's very important for, for the generation of, of life and for our cycle. But carbon exists in a few forms. Graphene and diamond. Aaron. Exactly, yes, very good, very good. So uh, the most well-known forms of carbon are diamond, but also graphite. Graphite, which is like a pencil and the black stuff of the pencil. Uh, yeah, the third allotropic form of carbon are the fullerenes. And as I said before, the fullerenes, they were succeeded by the carbon nanotubes, but also graphene. Eh? Graphene is basically a limited part, a very, very small part of graphite. Mr. Geim, Geim got the Nobel Prize for developing uh, graphene. So basically, okay, this, this, this is a visualization of a diamond lattice eh, where we have all the sp3 carbons. Here we have graphite, so it's like infinite, well, very, very large layers of conjugated benzene rings. And here we have the buckyballs. But of course, it, if you would take these molecules as they are here and end them with hydrogen atoms, then it would be graphene. The buckyballs were succeeded with the carbon nanotubes. So they basically used the same generation methods to make them in a similar way, but they put metal in the apparatus, small metal particles. And in that way, they could grow carbon nanotubes. So this is a carbon with a uh, small diameter, but it can be a very long tube. And we could, uh, in the beginning, it was all multi-walled carbon nanotubes. At some point, they improved their methods and they came to single wall carbon nanotubes. So here you see huh, it are uh, tubes consisting of, it's like uh, graphite that is wrapped to form a tube. And it, you see all the hexagonal rings. Okay, basically people like to control the diameter but also the, the form of the carbon nanotube. So people are using organic templates, like these ring type structures to control the diameter, but also maybe the chirality. So there are, even in this making carbon nanotubes, there's a lot of development. And as you may see, these two carbon nanotubes are actually, they, see, they seem very much the same, but they are different. All these rings are in the in axis of the tube, but here they are in a different direction. Carbon nanotubes can consist of metallic types and semiconductor types. So here you see metallic has uh, this shape. So you see, uh, okay, they call it armchair and uh, the zigzag configuration is semiconducting. So the way that the graphene rings are wrapped in the carbon nanotubes, it influences the properties of the carbon nanotube itself. So we have metallic and semiconductor. So this is the semiconducting carbon nanotube. The thing is that carbon nanotubes have really actually ended up in products. You can buy a tennis record that's reinforced with carbon nanotubes. In 2005, who won the tour in 2005? Does anybody know? But basically, this bicycle contained carbon nanotube for the, it can be a very, very strong material. I think it was Lance Armstrong, by the way. But also uh, people working on coating ships with such materials. They make uh, transistors and also 
in space, there are devices for uh, preventing electrostatic discharge. So here we also see that publications, but also the patents has, have risen uh, very, very strongly. And this is even only until 2011. A carbon nanotubes is really car a nanotechnology because it is products that you can buy. People are making money with that. Yeah, it was Armstrong, yeah. I, I. Nelly Smith-Cruz, she stimulated nanotechnology because she stimulated funding in the area of graphene, which is also uh, important. Mm, so this is basically uh, graphene. So it's a small par part of graphite. People are also seriously testing materials to use as a water filter. So water purification using carbon nanotube. It's like, it's like carbon black. It's very good absorbing material, but it may work better. And also in solar cells, people use thin film of carbon nanotubes as the conductive layer. So it can be a very light and bendable electron conductive layer. So in this paper here, they have put together all kinds of uh, material on applications of carbon nanotubes. And as we said, one of the things that people have tested is the conduction. So this is work from Delft, where they have put in two bars of gold next to each other. So this is with lithography. But between that, they have put in a carbon nanotube. So in this way, you can measure the current going through this carbon nanotube. And the distance here is like 50 nanometers. It implies that you can measure properties of single carbon nanotubes. Using building blocks to make nanostructures, uh, even from, from carbon nanotubes, and think about new things to do.